the first person to throw his hat into the ring for Singapore's upcoming presidential election. Senior Minister Tharman Shamugaratnam says he plans to resign from the People's Action Party and step down as Senior Minister and Coordinating Minister for Social Policies next month. That will end a 22-year career in politics. He is an experienced statesman and very popular. So will anyone challenge SM Tharman for the presidency in Singapore? Well, let's get to the point with Deputy News Editor Grace Ho. Grace, 22 years in politics, surely plenty of highlights. Where do we start? Um, there have been so many highlights, but I think we can break it down to a few different areas where he has contributed. He spent a lot of time handling finance and the economy. He started off in the Monetary Authority of Singapore as an economist in 1982. He left, later came back to MAS. And a legend has it that generations of young MAS officers still pour over his handwritten notes in the files. And he also spent nine years as Singapore's finance minister. And I think one of the key highlights when he was uh, when he joined as education minister in 2003 uh, was that he merged the EM1 and EM2 streams, pretty much kick-starting the dismantling of the streaming system, which had been in place for at least 20 years uh, by the time that he joined. And four years after that, uh, EM3 was scrapped. I think in terms of politics, he's proven to be one of the most popular politicians around. So if you remember the 2015 general election, his team garnered the highest vote share for the PAP um, with 79.29% of the vote. No mean feat, given that most of the time these days, the vote share is around like 60 plus percent. And there was always speculation about him becoming the next prime minister. And you know, a poll in 2016 showed that most Singaporeans actually did want him um, to be the next prime minister, although he ruled himself out. So Grace, like you rightly mentioned, SM Tharman is highly respected and well-liked. A strong opponent in any election, do you think he will gain the presidency uncontested? Well, if you look at history, out of the five presidential elections since 1993, only two were contested in 1993 and 2011. So yes, yeah, some are already predicting that it could be uncontested because his popularity and formidable resume is going to deter other hopefuls from throwing their hat into the ring. But some observers have also said that, you know, it may be damaging to the idea of an elected presidency if there's nobody else, because, well, the word elected is inside the elected presidency. But on the other hand, are we jumping the gun here? Because there have been other names floating around, but it's just that they haven't confirmed or denied as of today, at this point, or whether they are running. So you never know, you know, you might see some private sector candidates uh, coming out, you know, who believe that maybe they can gain the support of voters who prefer a so-called non-establishment candidate. But regardless, I think Mr. Tham holds broad appeal to many Singaporeans and many do see him as a personality larger than the ruling People's Action Party, which he came from. But I think there's also another point which I would like to make here, which is about reframing perspectives. So walk over or not, right? One doesn't necessarily have to be completely independent of the government of the day to be seen as having an independent streak. So what now, Grace? What will happen to the current portfolios that he'll be vacating? Will we see major changes? So there are portfolios in two senses of the word. One is the domestic ones and the other is the international one. Um, domestically, he has clearly said that he plans to resign from the party and step down from his post as SM and Coordinating Minister for Social Policies on July the 7th. Um, one key question is, who's going to fill his role as Anchor Minister in Jerome GRC? He did sort of answer this question during the press conference on Thursday. He said that Mr. Sean Huang will cover his Meet the People session uh, in Taman Jurong, which is his uh, ward, while the other MPs will take turns to cover other events and meetings with residents. And the other question is whether a by-election has to be called. And here it's worth noting that there is no requirement under the law to call a by-election if an MP resigns, even if that person belongs to the minority community. Then, of course, there's a question of a cabinet reshuffle, which usually takes place midway in the current term of government, which is pretty much about now. Um, again, the exact configuration of that is up in the air. Um, internationally, some of his stints have already ended, but I think there can be some kind of expectation that maybe he might streamline his engagements and prioritise those which are in the country's interest and which can make a tangible impact in his new role. 
Thank you, Grace, for your insights and perspectives.